when you think about the birth of the light bulb through Edison and a little help from Tesla there, you, you can look around and you can see at the exact same time there were many breakthroughs of the same invention in different parts of the world. You go to, you study history in other countries and they say they invented the light bulb because that idea was rich in the atmosphere already. And then people caught it. And here in America, we had good PR, you know, so, so good marketing, you know, so, so, so Edison got the most of the credit. But that idea was, was everywhere, you see. And so it's not, it's, it's the, the presence within that's doing the work. Course correction, you have eyes and you're seeing not because you're seeing your thoughts. You're not seeing reality. And so you're praying to see. Course correction, you're opening yourself up to the awareness that the world is mainly made up of thoughts and opinions and points of view. You're overcoming that particular world and living in the realm of my kingdom is not of this world. It's of a higher frequency. But it does get to demonstrate itself in this world. The, the eternal gets to break into time. And then you become aware increasingly of a sense of humility that is the presence, that the presence is the presence that's doing this, the presence that will feed itself, clothe itself, take care of itself. The presence will, will absolutely allow for all the conditions to, to turn out in a certain way that it can be more visible in one's life. I yield to the presence. And then you move into perhaps a, a chapter of Luke there, uh, chapter 23, verse 24, where he says, in substance, that uh, forgive them for they know not what they do. He's speaking about the power of forgiveness as a way to get the blot out of our own heart and get the moat out of our own eye and to get the, the fragment that would cause a sense of separation from the divine presence to dissolve it. Seventy times the seven. And as you begin to move into this realm, this is spiritual practice. You move through what I uh, label the five stages of, of forgiveness. The first one is simply willingness. Am I willing to forgive? And you have to check yourself before you wreck yourself where this is concerned. Because at times you got to pray for the willingness. They did you wrong. They said something about you. Or you perceived it that way. And so you have to grow into a deep sense of, of willingness. And sometimes you might have to say, presence, I can't do it. Do it through me. But however you get there, get there. You see? And, and then from willingness, you actually go through the process and the practice of forgiveness. You see the individuals in front of you. And you basically say in substance, uh, uh, whatever it is that you did or didn't do, or whatever it is I perceived you did or didn't do, cannot determine my destiny. I cut the cord and I forgive you. I forgive me. I set, our, I set us free so that my destiny can be set free. And then in that moment, you begin to, to free yourself from the limited perception that whatever anyone did or didn't do is preventing you from being you. You are not a victim. Stop using victim statements. You are not a victim. You set yourself free. Stage through two, you go through the practice, you see. Stage three, something begins to happen. This is when you know you're really, you're really juicing it up now. I don't mean with steroids, but... <laughs> spiritual steroids you really start to get down when something happens as our native brothers and sisters would say you start to walk a mile in the other individual's moccasins in other words you're able to see life from their point of view now you know when you're seeing life from your point of view you're always right <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way it is I'm right this is the way I see it. That's the way it is. Uh, but uh, with the continual forgiveness, uh, the, the seed of compassion begins to break open. And you begin to see things from other people's point of view. You don't have to agree with what you see, but you begin to see it. I, I, I was sharing in the earlier service. I always remember at one point when I was doing some bio-cybernaut training. 
And uh, there's, a, there's a section around day six or seven where you just open yourself up and you say in substance, whoever it is I need to forgive or who needs to forgive me, let him come into the field. And this gentleman popped into my field uh, that a number of years before that that had, uh, had, had done a little racial slur where I was concerned. And, and, uh, and I, I'd forgiven it and everything, but... In this field, as he popped up again, I said, why is this guy popping up again? I forgave him. It's all good. <clears throat> but suddenly, I popped out of my body, and I was in his consciousness. And I could see how he saw life. And I can see the ramifications of how he was raised allowed him to have a narrow point of view where people of color were concerned. And in seeing that, there was a burst of compassion that happened for him. And I could see that he could not say what he said because he didn't know any better because his state of consciousness was at the level where he was impacted by his upbringing. I saw the world through his eyes. I didn't agree with that world, but I saw it. And there was a deep sense of compassion for him that he was walking on the planet with a myopic point of view, Xing out large groups of people because of the color of their skin and would never know the deep radiant love and creativity and joy from these other cultures. He had cut himself off and was living in his own mind in a monolithic state of awareness with people he thought he could trust, not understanding that everyone was an emanation of God. Every flower is important. Every rose, every flower, every daffodil, every oak tree, every magnolia tree, everything brings a gift. Everyone brings a gift. And in that moment, so at that phase, stage three, we have compassion. And we see from another point of view. And then stage four, we, 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 we wish the individual well. Now, you may, this is advanced class right up in here. Because some of you don't really want to wish somebody well. You want to do all your forgiveness and then wait for karma to take over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I forgave him. I can't wait till karma gets his butt, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh! <laughs> when karma comes around, whoo! <laughs> I'm going to be there. I'm going to see it. <laughs> I forgive, though. I forgive. I'm, for I'm forgiven. But I want to see what happens. <laughs> but as we continue to advance spiritually, we wish the individual or individuals well. We want them to do good. We want them to be prosperous. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be happy. We want them to, to feel God's love. We want them to have peace of mind. And then the, the stage five, we do something a, a symbolic or real on their behalf. Sometimes it's just including them in our prayer work. Sometimes it's actually doing something for them and maybe doing it anonymously. Maybe sending a beautiful letter, maybe sending some money in the mail, maybe whatever the case, but, but you, you, you're basically taking energy and sharing it. And so you've gone through the five stages. And so if, in fact, you begin to see, no longer seeing through a glass darkly, no longer having eyes but seeing not, you're now praying, opening yourself up as you begin to, to open yourself up and be aware that there's a world that most people live in, but our kingdom is not of that world. It's invisible, transcendent. It's real. Someone overcame that world. Therefore, we can. We begin to realize that this presence is doing the work, and we are open and receptive to it. And that we're living in a 70 times 7 state of mind of forgiveness. Now there's renewal. Now the possibility of resurrection. Now the possibility of regeneration transformation begins to take place and we walk in the world not in any way tempted by the any of the by the two imposters praise or criticism they're both imposters we don't run around looking for praise and we don't run away from criticism we live hearing the word of god and then like a jesus we can stand between the thief of the future and the past 
not give any one of them any power. But understand that this moment, this instant, this presence right here, right now, all of the power is, all of the power is in the nowness of this moment. The past is rolled up like a scroll, never to read again. Future fantasies are dissolved. And in the nowness of this moment, all of the power is available to us. Thou shalt be with me in paradise in this instant. And the vibrational feeling tone of this allows us to, to literally and metaphorically roll away the stone from the tomb and step out into the bright sunshine of infinite potential. 